much, uh, <coughs> Program Director, uh, Mr. Hendrik Detroit, the CEO of 91 South Africa, Mr. Tabo Kojani, Managing Director, uh, led leaders of business and investors on the platform, and all distinguished delegates. Uh, good morning, Abshene Huyamore. Let me begin by thanking you, Mr. Detroit, and your team for inviting us to participate in this important global investment summit under the theme Adapting to a New Reality and a platform that seeks to propel the economy forward. We are joining you virtually because today we are responding to questions in the National Council of Provinces in Cape Town. So I'm not able to, to be in Johannesburg. We decided to join you because we, are, we regard you as a critical player and a critical partner in growing our economy. We are confident that many of you have joined this summit because like us, you believe in South Africa and support our developmental agenda as outlined in the National Development Plan, the NDP 2030, aimed at eliminating poverty, reducing inequality, including growing an inclusive economy amongst others. Most recently, in response to the impact of COVID-19, we have adopted what we call the Economic Reconstruction and Recovery Plan to put South Africa back to the pedestal of economic growth and prosperity. We are beginning to see the results in this regard. For example, according to Stats SA, is that the economy after contracting by a revised 1.1% in the fourth quarter of last year, real GDP edge higher in the first quarter of this year, 2023, expanding by an estimated 0.4%. As you are aware, the manufacturing and finance industries were the major drivers of growth on the supply side of the economy. The demand side was lifted by exports with smaller positive contributions for households, government, and investment spending. The African Development Bank, AFDB, projected the Republic of South African economy to grow marginally by 0.2% in 2023 and 1.5% in 2024, supported by growth in trade, tourism, mining, and manufacturing. The FDB projects that inflation will ease to 5.9% in 2023 and decline further to 4.5% in 2024 on account of reduced fuel and food prices subject to evolving global dynamics. Furthermore, the FDB reports that the, the fiscal deficit is projected to increase marginally to 6.2% of GDP <coughs> in 2023 and 6.7% in 2024 due to fiscal consolidation, including higher tax revenue. The current account deficit is projected to widen to 2.2% of GDP in 2023 and 2.4% in 2024 due to an anticipated drop in commodity prices. Whereas the IMF looking ahead on real GDP growth indicated it is projected at 0.1% in 2023 with annual growth expected at about 1.5% over the medium term. While the economy is gradually returning to pre-COVID period, 
we are aware that there is more than there is more that we can do to change the fortunes of our economy. Also, because the current growth levels will not create enough jobs, particularly to absorb new, ent new labor uh, market entrants. Program Director, hence we appreciate your efforts to keep the critical matter of socioeconomic transformation on the national agenda by investing in global change, a crucial aspect of socioeconomic transformation. More than ever before, the government and the business sector must work together to fund and invest in projects that can generate both income and profit and unearth investment opportunities in the country. In this regard, we urge you to work with us through Infrastructure South Africa to partner on our infrastructure portfolio, including partnering with the Department of Water to invest in water infrastructure so as to avoid another crisis in that sector. This is because through Operation Vulindlela, the Department of Water and Sanitation is working towards <coughs> resolving 80% of water use licenses as requested by mining companies within 90 days. Ladies and gentlemen, we must work together to build and strengthen our economy. We must find real world solutions to the burning issues of poverty, unemployment, and inequality that confront us as a people. We are coming to this summit with an open mind to hear what you have to say, hear you out, and also with the aim to go back to the drawing board on some of the issues so that our country can become or seen as investor friendly. We assure you that there are many investment prospects in South Africa. Investors may consider investing in industries such as manufacturing, agribusiness, transport and logistics, the ocean economy, the digital economy, and renewable energy. <coughs> Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, as a matter of agency, solving the energy crisis remains at the top of the agenda of our government. Together with business and the government, we want to work with you to stabilize the energy supply by, amongst others, fixing ESCOM and improving the availability of existing supply. Secondly, enabling and accelerating private investment in generation capacity. Third, accelerating the procurement of new capacity from renewables, gas, and battery storage. Fourth, unleashing business and households to invest in rooftop solar. And fifth, to fundamentally transform the electricity sector to achieve long-term energy security. Equally, government continues to rapidly implement the Integrated Resource Plan 2019 by procuring additional energy <coughs> capacity through renewable energy procurement programs. In addition, the following measures have been taken and will continue to be taken. One, release further bid windows on an accelerated basis. Bid window seven should be released this month for 5,000 megawatts of solar PV and wind, further RFPs for 1,200 megawatts of battery storage and 3,000 megawatts of gas, and preparatory work should be undertaken soon to explore a mega big, mega big window or what we call the rolling bit window. Second, procured emergency power solutions. A ministerial determination has been issued and a procurement and funding strategy 
has been developed. Third, cross-border power purchase from neighboring countries. A ministerial determination has also been issued to secure 1,000 megawatts of additional power from Mozambique, which could be made available within six months of the PPA signature. You, most of you may be aware that Minister Ramkopa, our Minister of Electricity, has already concluded an agreement with his counterpart in Mozambique in this regard. Ladies and gentlemen, furthermore, we have developed the Just Transition Plan to guide the nation's transition from fossil fuels to a sustainable and equitable energy system without occasioning a bloodbath of job losses. Our Just Transition, Just Energy Transition Investment Plan for the five years from 2022 to 2027 <coughs> outlines the scale of need and the investment required to meet the decarbonization commitments in our nationally determined contribution, which outlines the rate in which South Africa intends to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and represent South Africa's fair contribution to the Paris Agreement goals. Through the Just Energy Transition Partnership, we are demonstrating our collective dedication to easing the negative effects of the energy transition on South Africa's economic workforce and communities. However, as work towards the just transition, we will not transition in darkness. It would be irresponsible of us, given our current energy supply, challenges to simply abandon the existing base load energy sources with haste and no guarantees for our economy's long-term energy security. Ladies and gentlemen, we are also intensifying our investment drive and eliminating red tape across government. We must improve the time it takes to make decisions this includes the issuing of business licenses and general approvals. In this regard, the presidency has established a red tape team to facilitate business operations led by Mr. Siponkos. The government is also reducing bureaucracy through the simplification of administra administrative procedures that when the private sector interacts with government agencies, business must navigate intricate and time-consuming administrative procedures. We must reduce this unnecessary red tape. Distinguished delegates, it is important to remember that for South Africa to advance, we must adapt to new reality. As government, we are well on track in responding to the demands of the fourth industrial revolution. In the context of the evolving FIR, <coughs> our national digital and future skills strategy provides a vital framework for inclusive collaboration between industry, labor, higher education institutions, and society to develop new set of skills and capabilities for our nation. Our government is focused on implementing measures that will lead to increased productivity. This necessitates equipping public servants with the skills and abilities necessary to manage the new challenges <coughs> competently. We want a more agile, result-oriented, efficient, and ethical public sector. We are also instilling the discipline of execution in the public service. This has been our biggest challenge. In this regard, through the National School of Government, we have partnered with leading institutions such as the University College of London to deliver executive education programs 
for senior public servants. This morning, together with senior public servants, I joined the master class by Mariana Muzicato, Professor of Economics from UCL, on the entrepreneurial state and mission economy as strategies for increasing state capacity and driving inclusive growth. This is part of the continued commitment to ensuring that we improve the discipline of execution across the state as we seek to build a developmental and entrepreneurial state that drive development. Ladies and gentlemen, we therefore urge you as investors to continue investing in our country. We commend many of you for your continued investments in our country, in youth development initiatives, as demonstrated through the youth employment <coughs> stimulus initiated, as well as investments in Still no sound from you, DP's office. Can you hear us, Mr. Deputy President? Yes, I can. Okay. Yeah, I got it back. The sound has been restored. There was a brief interruption and it was not load shedding. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, certainly you can please shedding. finish. It was just a technical uh, hitch. Uh, I'm about to, uh, to finish. Uh, so I'd like to assure you that we remain committed a peaceful world. In this regard, we are working together with the African Union, led by President Ramaphosa, to engage both President Putin and President Zelensky to return to the negotiating table in the interest of peace. We will continue to urge the rest of the world to work with us in finding a lasting solution to the Russia-Ukraine conflict. We are also making efforts to support peace initiatives in South Sudan and other parts of the African continent. In conclusion, Program Director, South Africa remains open for business. We want to strengthen collaboration with businesses so that we change the fortunes of our economy and more importantly ensure that the economy grows and that more people are involved in the economy. Regardless of obstacles, we are committed to staying the course. Our ultimate goal is shared growth and shared prosperity for all our people and all committed uh, partners like yourselves. We wish you all the best as you find ways to adapt to a new reality. Thank you very much, uh, <coughs> Program Director. Get things done. Uh, as you said earlier, one of our challenges has been uh, to be known to not implement our policies and our decisions. If we do, we are very slow. So I want to see a situation where we move faster uh, in implementation uh, and we collaborate with other important stakeholders because one of the weaknesses in South Africa is you know business and government are not talking enough uh, even if when they do they don't move in tandem to ensure seamless implementation and I think it's something that we need to we need to fix uh, in the next few years we want to see South Africa where government and business are working together all the time, uh, sharing experiences, uh, coming with common strategies. And I think if we do that, we should be able to ensure that in the next few years, we have a South Africa that is uh, prosperous, a South Africa that can end inequality, that can ensure that we reduce unemployment and uh, poverty, 
uh, and make sure that uh, our people are productive. Uh, and that's why uh, one of the things we put in a lot of uh, emphasis on is skills development. Uh, I currently chair the Human Resource Development Council and we're busy working with provinces, local government to ensure that uh, there are skills in the, not only in the public sector but throughout society, particularly amongst young people. And I think that's what uh, I'm going to be working hard with my team and others in government to make sure that we achieve. Well, uh, my team told me that you guys have a lot of money, so <laughs> uh, <laughs> I want that money. <laughs> uh, but on a serious note, I, th I, I, I think what I want is uh, partnership. Uh, you know, government alone will not be able to deal with the challenges we face. Uh, so I want real partnership with the private sector. Uh, and we will ensure that as government, we, we deal with the challenges that you have identified. And one of them, obviously, is the issue of red tape. Uh, you know, the private sector has been saying to us, when we try and work with government, you know, uh, we, we have to go through a lot of red tape. There's bureaucracy in government that consume a lot of time. Uh, so we'd like to deal with that decisively so that when we call you to partner with us, uh, you mustn't say, but you know, we've been trying to find you. Uh, we can't find you, we write to you, you don't respond. Um, and, and generally make sure that there's an ease of, be of doing business in South Africa. Because once we do that, I'll, I'm convinced that South Africa will prosper. Uh, so what do I want? Partnership, partnership, and partnership.